Uh, okay, my name is Victor Mireles. I'm researcher at Semantic Web Company. Uh, it's a private company in Austria. I will talk quickly uh, about who we are because I think it might be relevant for this. It's, um, it's a company which is uh, over 15 years old now. It's based in Vienna, Austria. And we are selling uh, software for businesses. So it's a B2B software company. And our clients include some of the big name companies that we use all the time. Um, and our, our main product is called Pool Party Semantic Suite, which is very much related or very much relevant to what we are all interested in right now. This is just some uh, names, uh, examples of some of our current customers. But uh, let me talk to you quickly about what we, uh, the product that we that we sell what it does. Uh, it has these, uh, let's say, three facets. The first of them is uh, uh, what we call a taxonomy and ontology server. So it's kind of a visual UI interface for collaborative taxonomy and ontology creation. So one can create uh, yeah, taxonomies of uh, terms, ontologies, and knowledge graphs based on these ontologies in a more or less um, user-friendly way. Of course, there are also APIs and uh, stuff to do it in a more programmatic way. And then uh, using these taxonomies, the taxonomies thus created, one can uh, use pool party semantic suite to do entity extraction, which is something common to many of the efforts presented here. So basically finding um, entities mentioned in documents, uh, of course, taking into account synonyms and plurals and this kind of stuff. And using these entities that are found there, if there is uh, any more semantic information of the sort of links to DBpedia, Wikidata, and so on, one can create, um, yeah, uh, expand this knowledge graph and use this to power other sorts of tools like uh, search and this kind of stuff. I will give you a quick demo on this later, just like a, a, a glimpse of this. Um, okay, but the, here I would like to, uh, to stop for a second. So going a little bit in the direction of what Frank was asking before regarding the use of uh, semantic information, what we understand as semantic data in the, form, in, in the semantic web sense. So yeah, uh, lists of entities and uh, triples which um, conform to some ontology. So how do we use this and how do we combine this for uh, doing AI? So, or with existing AI methods, there are many approaches. We are currently investigating one of them. Uh, I think it might be interesting for uh, just to mention and I'm happy to discuss afterwards. Um, so in the example that um, the fashion was uh, showing earlier, or in general, in any of these processing techniques that do embeddings on things, so word embeddings or word embeddings or document embeddings uh, or triple embeddings, as I saw someone uh, linking. There is this, um, there is, let's say, a long, low, hang, a relatively low hanging fruit way of adding semantics into this, which is incorporating into the word into the things that are being embedded, for example, notes in the, in the case of the previous presentation, incorporating the information of, uh, that comes from the semantics of this. So that means, uh, for example, adding neighbors to a node in the case of graph embeddings, right? So uh, one can construct a, a co-occurrence graph, which is something we also do all the time, uh, but uh, connect this co-occurrence graph with other uh, graphs, for example, the taxonomies of the entities mentioned there. And then uh, if the graph embedding algorithm is done correctly, which is the case of what was presented earlier, then these neighbors would also uh, affect the embedding. And in the case of text, <clears throat> so if when one wants to do, let's say text embeddings, uh, but one has semantics, additional semantics about the entities mentioned in the text, a very simple, it might sound even naive, a way, a way to incorporate this 
uh, we we have experimented with is to let's say substitute a word with um, some um, with a couple more. So let's say, for example, in the example that you're seeing here in the screen, let's say that you have this uh, mention, for example, to meet Romney, right? So uh, one way to incorporate this semantics is substituting the tokens meet Romney with tokens meet Romney, comma, um, I don't know, Republican senator, I think senator, I think he's comma, um, I don't know, I think he's famous for being a Mormon, so Mormon, comma, and this kind of stuff. So just adding extra tokens there in plain text that one can extract from the knowledge graph uh, already brings in some semantics. And uh, these are actually useful. Uh, so for what we have experimented with in this regard has been just text, the standard text classification tasks tasks so you have a bunch of documents and they can be classified into several classes and this is a let's say quite a well-known problem with really good results and one can get a slightly a slight improvements in f1 scores for example uh, on, if one starts classifying not the not just the text itself but the text in which the entities have been substituted in the way that I mentioned earlier. So that is one very simple way to add a little bit of the semantics that come from a knowledge graph into uh, just say a brute force, plug it into uh, existing machine learning algorithm. Uh, so John, I just, um, if, if anyone wants to try it out, uh, it's it's fun, and I think it's a good idea that we try this out also in the network sense. Okay, so uh, this part you you all know uh, what this um, challenge by Kaggle is about. So we have this uh, Core 19 data set already version 20 something uh, with lots of papers, and the idea is to produce something that can be that can eventually go back to researchers to uh, make research in AI, uh, research in COVID uh, easier or faster. Like, um, yeah, tools like the ones I'll present you or the, like the ones that uh, were presented earlier. And what, do, what have we been doing so far? So uh, first thing we have done is uh, create a very simple ontology. So this is an ontology that uh, talks about annotations. So uh, fire, the FIRE dataset has its own ontology for uh, in the R in the RDF version of FIRE. Uh, there's it, it has its own ontology for annotations on texts, uh, which is much more rich than this one, more, much more ex expressive. There are other much more expressive ontologies, of course, but uh, since this data set is not necessarily small, especially if you start counting the number of paragraphs there, uh, yeah, and uh, Sparkle queries we all know are not necessarily the fastest ones. So it, uh, we decided to materialize uh, some of the relations that we that we um, are interested in. So that leads to a much uh, more compact ontology, which is basically a document has some metadata. For example, here I just put creator, uh, DC creator. And this document has a, a bunch of text sections. And these sections, we materialize a relation that uh, directly to a concept. Yeah, so this sec uh, these sections have uh, links to SCOS concepts. And uh, these SCOS concepts themselves are, are linked using the standard SCOS narrower, broader relations to other concepts. So this in uh, on the right-hand side with uh, in pink are what we are, let's say, the vocabularies. Yeah. So the vocabularies that, for example, that Frank was mentioning earlier, that leukemia is a type of cancer, uh, is expressed in this relation. So let me uh, show you a little bit of what we have in this um, in this respect. Mm, sorry, this is not. Uh, I think this is nope. And this is, sorry, a lot of. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, um, I hope I'm still logged in. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. So uh, let me just reload this to see if things work. Yeah. Okay. So this is an example of um, of this SCOS 
taxonomy that was on the right. So you have neoplasm, um, yeah, which is, let's say, uh, one can ask exactly what this is. So it's a generalization of tumor. And uh, for example, here, mesh, this, the disease branch of mesh has some information, uh, for example, saying that, uh, yeah, uh, neoplasms can, um, classified by anatomical site, yeah. And these neoplasms classified by anatomical site, uh, yeah, there are, for example, these uh, breast tumors, uh, yeah, eye tumors, soft tissue tumors, and so on. Uh, and their neoplasms are a sort of uh, phenotypic abnormality, and so on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is basically what we what we mean by the SCOS um, terminology which is here on the right hand side yeah. and uh, now from here we can then see okay how do we connect this SCOS terminology to um, other uh, terminologies and uh, to the to the actual core date uh, 19 data set and uh, let me sh oops okay, let me just show you quickly how we can do this um, Okay, so this is also the GraphDB workbench that was shown earlier. Uh, and here we can go, that is here, yeah, visual graph. We have, yeah, this other graph. So it's the same graph, just two different views on it. Yeah, the other one was, was restricted to this taxonomy view. So if you don't know GraphDB, you, one can customize the visualizations really nice uh, using Sparkle queries. So I've created another one using the data set. This is a subset of the data set. And here I can take a look at the same part of the graph. Uh, and here uh, we have, for example, that neoplasm is mentioned in a bunch of different paragraphs. Yeah? Uh, and for example, this paragraph zero, which is a part of an article that has this title, yeah, DNA scaffolded materials, blah, blah, uh, mentions the word neoplasm, but also mentions uh, these other concepts, yeah. Uh, so it can mention, for example, antigen, yeah. And, uh, and then we can say, okay, uh, how many paragraphs mention uh, together antigen and neoplasm. So the kind of the co-occurrence of these two concepts, we have them here. Uh, there are these, uh, these nodes here in the middle hooked to both the red nodes. Yeah. And uh, here I'm restricting the visualization only to the, I, I think 30 nodes or something. But of course uh, there are edges, the edges that I showed you earlier are also present in the graph to neoplasm, yeah, the, let's say the edges coming from the scos, the saurus. So yeah, this is the nice uh, visualization, but what can we do with it, uh, with this graph? Okay, so uh, I'll show you here. So one can take a look uh, because one has a scos, yeah, a scos has these um, narrower, broader relationships all over, yeah, so this hierarchy of concepts. And uh, in, one can use um, property paths in uh, Sparkle to search for nodes which are either directly or indirectly connected to another one using a predicate. So what I have here, I have uh, taken a look at the UR, uh, on the human phenotype ontology URI of neoplasm, which is uh, this one. And then I said, okay, give me all the nodes which are which have as a direct or indirect broader uh, this node. So this means these are all the types of neoplasms or types of types of neoplasms or types of types of types of types of types of neoplasms and so on. So it's a, a transitive uh, broader uh, no, nodes that have neoplasm as a transitive broader. And the same I can do with coronavirus, which uh, we know is a, uh, also a class of uh, different virus strains. Okay, so we can uh, run this Sparkle query. And what we get here is the set of texts that mention different, uh, sorry, different neoplasms and different coronavirus. As you can see, ne neither of these are uh, the terms that I specified. So this is 
not directly neoplasm and this is not directly coronavirus, but this is a transitive narrower of coronavirus and this is a transitive narrower of, of neoplasm and so on. So with this kind of queries, I can <clears throat> do, uh, I can solve the kind of uh, questions that uh, Frank was um, um, asking earlier. So exploiting a little bit more of the semantics included in the vocabularies. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is the first thing uh, that we can do. And of course we can do this for uh, many other stuff. So since this, um, this set of this graph is based on the CORD-19 dataset, which of course uh, has already some bias towards coronavirus and so on, it's a good idea to take a look at things uh, that are not uh, necessarily having to do with um, coronavirus. So this, uh, what this shows is sets of paragraphs that mention some neoplasm and some respiratory illness uh, in the context, of course, of uh, COVID-19. So it means we know that these paragraphs come, this paragraph comes from an article which comes from the CORT-19 dataset, which means it mentions something like uh, COVID or coronavirus or SARS or something like that. So, okay, this is, uh, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that um, the semantics, let's say the... Yeah, can I ask a question? Please. Yeah, so uh, you, you're talking about taxonomy and also you, you have link from Obo ontology. So uh, did you build your taxonomy or uh, scars of vocabulary based on Obo vocabulary or you, you, you did that by yourself? So we did it. It's a combination. Yes, we have only... Um, okay, to answer your question, we use only as cost taxonomies. Mm. It's true that not all the vocabularies are, let's say, taxonom uh, hierarchical in nature. Uh, some of them have been turned into hierarchical by other people. There's, for example, exhaustive research on how to do a cost taxonomy out of mesh. We have taken these efforts done by others uh, and others uh, are already kind of hierarchical like gene ontology uh, or multi-hierarchical. And uh, yeah, so it's a combination of both. Uh, the, the short answer is everything we use is hierarchical and this hierarchy, either we infer it ourselves, let's say by hand with some, um, uh, let's say RDF transformations or we reuse what other people have done uh, in, in, for other vocabularies, yes. So that means not all the terms in your vocabulary uh, have a Obo Foundry URIs. Uh, yeah, that's correct because there are some vocabularies which are not in Obo Foundry. Yes. Okay. Uh, this vocabulary is particularly uh, related to the COVID nineteen domain. Is that correct? Mm, uh, no. So that's. I mean, we have here a very large vocabulary, which is a combination of several. So we have. Uh, let me go back to the slides. We have, um, what we have right here is the annotations that you guys have put in the fire. Okay. Uh, also the annotations that come from the Termite dataset presented some weeks ago. <clears throat> this is, and also some annotations that we have done ourselves using the software that I talked to you earlier about earlier. And all of these annotations use these uh, vocabularies, which are shown here. So we have, uh, some of them are in Obo, uh, some are not. And uh, there's so, oh. and yeah. sorry. No, didn't you say you were using Wikidata as also for some of the relationships? No, not in this case. We are not. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's. Uh, can I can I ask a quick? Uh, how many statements are in your in your? Well, okay. How many unreified statements in there, or and then how many um are in the materialized views? Yeah, sure. So uh, in the original graph, let's say with, with the full uh, full ontology, which is also very simple, which is here without this black arrow, we have 40 million uh, statements uh, for the for the bio archive section of court 19 dataset, which is 
yeah, uh, the sm uh, small section of it. it. I think in this version which we have, which is version nine, I think it's not even half of the whole core 19 data set. So yeah, and the other, as you see in this case, the materialization is not so, uh, yeah, so so different. So the, there's some uh, a small reduction if we do the materialization. But uh, this 40, in the order of 40 million um, uh, statements are, I can actually show the number here. Yeah, so 43 million, uh, 570,000 statements they are uh, only for the full for the full text of the uh, of the um, uh, bio archive and med archive section of court 19 and they are still uh, a lot but much less than what is used is what uh, is contained for example in sidebytes annotation so sidebyte has like uh, 10 times as many statements yeah. because they have a much more complicated ontology yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just quickly show you um, the other application of what we have. So this is, uh, we can do uh, using this knowledge graph, we can uh, do a faceted search, which is kind of similar to what was shown earlier, except this one is based on documents. Yeah? So what we have here uh, is for the different diseases. Yeah, we have, I'm sorry. For the different diseases, we have, um, yeah, um, for example, coronavirus diseases, yeah. And what we can find here is uh, the different articles that mention a disease which is inside of this. So this is a relatively simple um, application of this, uh, yeah, uh, of this hierarchical organization of diseases. And the last thing I want to show you, I'm sorry, I don't have. Uh, uh, much time and also not much results on this. So we are doing this annotation a bit in the direction of what was uh, mentioned earlier, where we have a bunch of sentences. Yeah. And uh, for these sentences, we identified um, entities there actually using the fire data set. Uh, and then we read the sentences by uh, by hand. Okay, first we filter them out, those which mention uh, thi um, COVID and some other disease, yeah, so cancer, diabetes, and so on. And uh, and then we try to see if these are actually comorbidity, uh, if these sentences are actually indicating comorbidity. And what we're trying to do with this is uh, also approach the link prediction task that Fashion was showing earlier, but uh, using slightly different uh, techniques. Uh, but we're in the middle of this annotation process. And yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, more or less all I have to show for now. Yes. If you have any questions, this is my email address. Great, anybody how wanna much, ask any questions? Yeah. How, this how much of, of this uh, extractions and so on you're gonna make public or is this all proprietary? No, uh, yeah, so everything will be made public. Actually this, uh, if you're interested, I can give you credentials to this GraphDB instance already. Uh, it's still kind of uh, in development, let's say, yeah, but uh, the idea is to make this um, download, downloadable. But I must say that most of the annotations that you see here are uh, done by other people, uh, many of whom are present today. Today, So yeah, it's not a, a great deal what we have regarding annotations. What is going to be really fun, I think, is when we have some uh, other link predictions or pred predicted links, and those are, of course, more interested, interesting, yes. But, but they will also be made public, yeah. Your cost hierarchy could be useful. Oh, yeah, if you are interested in this, I'm, I'm, very, I'm more than happy to share. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Victor. It was, uh, again, very interesting. Thank you all very much for joining, and I uh, look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you. Thank you for the right. two Thank great you. presentations today. Bye -bye. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Bye-bye.